Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Jamie is the founder and editor of the Australian National Review, an independent news website similar to our own here at theunshackled.net. He is based on the Gold Coast, Queensland, where there is a large pro-freedom and anti-globalist community. Uh, Jamie has recently launched his own video show, The McIntyre Report. He comes uh, from the entrepreneurial world and is currently a business and investment coach with his 21st century education project. And he is the author of a number of uh, e-books on uh, business and entrepreneurship. So Jamie, welcome to Wilmsfront. Thanks, Tim. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And now you launched uh, the uh, Australian National Review in, in 2013. It's no relation to uh, the US uh, conservative magazine, the, the National uh, Review. And uh, I have to say it's uh, very up to date with uh, the latest uh, in the, the US election results count, we should refer to it as, because as I said uh, in my introduction, Joe Biden is only president-elect according to the mainstream media, uh, social media, and uh, globalist leaders, uh, because uh, our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, uh, declared him uh, president-elect, and so did uh, Boris Johnson. But the count is still ongoing, and the Electoral College doesn't meet until December. Yeah, it certainly is interesting times. And I, I said in a video a few days ago that it's an embarrassment for Australia that our Prime Minister... Uh, was one of the countries around the world that has, you know, congratulated Joe Biden on winning the US presidency when we know it's, it's still fake news at this time. He hasn't won. Uh, as you mentioned there, the, there's multiple states that are too close to call. Some there, you know, such as Arizona, they called for, for Biden when, you know, it looks like Trump will end up winning that state. So, um, there, as we know, mainstream media is predominantly extreme left wing. Um, and uh, the bias, I uh, mean, it's it just they don't even try and hide the bias anymore. Um, but it's not just mainstream media, no, Tim. You know, the tech giants are in on it. They don't like. Uh, they don't want Trump to win, and it's a bit like they want to tell us voters uh, who we have to accept as uh, as the leader of the the free world, so to speak. And and uh, why don't you just switch to a communist system? You know, why even have the illusion of democracy if they're not going to support uh, democracy? I mean, I don't care what sort of politics people are on. Uh, as long as I'm sure we'd all agree, Tim, we need to support fair and honest elections, and we have not seen that in the U.S., and no one can say there's no voter fraud in the U.S. It's just nonsense. I mean, the amount of evidence of voter fraud that we've got at A&R alone, I mean, we'd have to spend months talking about it to even get through it all. I mean, and that's one of the reasons I put up a $10 million challenge to anyone that wants to prove me wrong, that there isn't voter fraud going on. It's so, um, it, and it's you're rightfully so, he shouldn't even be called... A, um, president-elect joe biden yet um until such time as that happens we don't know who's going to be the next president but if cnn we listen to cnn etc they seem to have chosen their chosen one for us and don't really care what the voters had to say uh, well one of my commenters uh pc leaks pete said uh fox news is dead and they uh were actually the first to call uh arizona uh for uh biden uh, actually, a CNN actually hasn't called uh, Arizona yet uh, for Biden, uh, even though North Carolina, they've counted what nearly 100% of the vote, uh, Trump is ahead mm. by 75,000 votes, they still haven't called uh, North Carolina for uh, Trump. And uh, uh, Pete's uh, view is is shared by many who who believe that this election is when Fox News, the so called evil right wing Murdoch network, uh, became part of the uh, the globalist uh, media elite. They uh, they cut away from uh, uh, Trump's uh, uh, press secretary when she started talking about uh, voter fraud. Uh, they they first did this uh, with uh, with Trump's own press conferences, and and it's unprecedented for U.S. networks to suddenly break from a live broadcast to engage in alleged fact checking. Oh, it's just absurd. I mean, this goes to show, like you know, 
uh, that what they're doing, they basically think they're above uh, the power of the president. Uh, they basically think they have the right to choose who the president is. And this heightened arrogance, not just from the mainstream media, but from the tech giants such as Facebook, etc. Uh, and maybe their arrogance is well placed because perhaps they have chosen who the past presidents of most uh, of the US have been in, in other countries for a long time. Maybe they do have that power, but they told us all along that uh, Joe Biden was going to win in a landslide and that fake fake polls uh, told us that as well. But once again, they were wrong. Uh, there was no landslide victory to Biden and uh, they're continually wrong, but they continually, despite that, uh, want to push fake news that, that Joe Biden's the next president when you know there is recounts, automatic recounts, uh, and then there's there's uh, the matter of legal issues to be resolved before he will be become president, and uh, there's still some doubt whether he will be. But clearly, um, you know, it's it's pathetic with the the voter fraud that's going on. Any um, mainstream media team, you know, if they were independent, truly independent, they'd be going, okay, well, let's make sure uh, that this is a fair and honest election. Let's order investigate any of those uh, you know v claims that have some validity. Just so we ensure that we the the right win with the right person, the right uh, president is elected. That's what they should be saying. They shouldn't be trying to censor now anyone that you dare mention voter fraud. Uh, Facebook will delete you. I mean, my Facebook page of you know, almost a hundred thousand followers yeah, is deleted. I've got it here. Yeah. So yeah, you've offered the the ten million to anyone on the planet who can prove that the Democrats have not committed voter fraud to try and steal the US election. And then you got this uh, email from Facebook uh, removing the, the Jamie McIntyre official uh, uh, fan page. It said that your page was, uh, or amongst other things, uh, your page was hateful, threatening, obscene. Uh, you attacked uh, individuals, groups, uh, or set up by an unauthorized individual. Yeah, it's interesting. They don't say exactly why, but we know it's all just nonsense and I'm not the only one. But there's one thing to being banned, but when they delete your page entirely, and this is going on now a lot. I mean, this is fascism. Uh, this is, you know, that's why they, Facebook is now known as Fascist Book. Uh, Zuckerberg has been caught out also funding safe, uh, safe elections project in the United States. Uh, noticeably, there's a few counties where they're all these votes are surprisingly shown up for Biden, happened to be in the three counties uh, that received funding by Zuckerberg. Uh, so Zuckerberg's not the only one, but um, I mean, I don't know how anyone that's intelligent and then, you know, is not so extremely biased can't see the massive voter fraud. I mean, it's just a nonsense, the level of voter fraud that's going on right now. Um, it's, it's, it's really, it's just blatant. And I think it's coming, they're making mistakes because they're very desperate to not get caught. I think what happened, Tim, is that they always plan to rig Pennsylvania because the two main swing states you know is Florida and Pennsylvania. So they thought it's a fair chance it was a tight election to come down to Pennsylvania. But what happened on election day is that Trump was so far in front, was winning nearly, winning nearly all the swing states that he didn't even need Pennsylvania and he could probably still win the election. So Trump should have been called the winner on the election day if it was neutral media uh, because he was so far ahead mathematically, he couldn't lose from that position he was in. But all of a sudden, those three Democrat-controlled states just basically said they just stopped counting the votes and went home, uh, which is unheard of. And then overnight, mysteriously, um, and you even see when on CNN, they're stunned the commentators when 120-odd thousand votes just magically jump up on Biden's tally. And Biden jumped ahead then, I think, in Wisconsin. This happened in a second state as well, I think, Michigan. Two states that I did a summary the night of the election night and said, well, Michigan's in the bag. There's no way Trump could lose from here. Next day, the, Biden's now the winner, apparently, of the, that state and uh, Wisconsin, So, which changed the whole path where really biden was mathematically i would say in, in, in a lot of people others would say that could not have won unless there was voter fraud involved from the position he was in on late on election day uh, last week uh, i hosted two uh, live streams uh, where the uh, the first votes were were being counted we started at uh, midday melbourne time uh, on aaron cuckable's program where the count looked like try yeah it, it was all heading in trump's 
directions and he was way ahead in Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, uh, Pennsylvania. And Mm. at about 2.30 in the the afternoon, we're like, well, this is looking pretty promising for Trump. But then about 3, it all just stopped. And so we ended at 4 p.m. because we are sort of speculating, well, it was clear that nothing more was going to be counted uh, during that time. So we just had to sort of hold our breath. And I did a, a later stream at uh, a Wilmsfront stream, 9 p.m. Melbourne time that night when they would found uh, those ballots at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. And because you remember it, it was around about uh, dinner time, uh, Australian time, when Biden got up and said, we feel very good about where we are at the moment. He spoke, spoke first. We now know why he felt very good about uh, where things were at and that uh, he was going to be the winner. And then Trump made the point that we were winning everything and then it just stopped and we don't want them to find 100,000 ballots at three in the morning and add that to the vote and that's what happened. It's crazy, isn't it? Exactly what happened. And uh, obviously he was aware that they're going to try and rig the election. I mean, I mean, let's face it. I mean, anyone with common sense would go, how, how can someone... They're claiming Joe Biden has received more votes than any president in the history of, of the United States. He's a guy that couldn't even get six people to his rally, that the only people who can get to vote for him are dead people and dogs, you know, like, mm. and they're saying mainstream media, no evidence of fraud. I mean, there's dogs that have been listed on mail ballots, and we know mail ballots go to Biden. Uh, so they've got dogs voting for Biden and dead people. I mean, they can only get six people to his rallies, where we know Trump was pulling tens of thousands of people per rally and five rallies a day. I mean, I think if we got the real figures, we would see and witness a massive landslide victory to Trump. But it's true. Trump was winning. He couldn't have lost um, without the rigging. So, um, But we can see that because if mainstream media had nothing to hide, they wouldn't be so strict on censoring and deleting any of us. I mean, how dare I put up a $10 million challenge to uh, that that there's voter fraud? And some people say, well, why don't you put up the money to um, to, um, prove there is voter fraud? I said, well... I, I, well, I put up a dollar fifty challenge to prove this voter fraud because there's so much ample evidence of voter fraud. It's only worth a dollar fifty and it soon dropped to twenty five cents. But there's ten million up for grabs if anyone can prove it's not voter fraud uh, in the U.S. election. Well, going back to the you mentioned the the popular vote uh, before. If I go if I go back to the Fox, so currently. Uh, Biden is just below 77 million popular votes, which is the most that any presidential candidate has got. Uh, Trump is now close to 72 million uh, popular votes, which that's the second most uh, popular votes that a, a U.S. presidential candidate has got. In the 2016 presidential election, uh, Hillary got 65 million popular votes. Trump got 62 million votes. Hey. Uh, uh, Trump has got more uh, popular votes than Obama did in his landslide win in uh, 2008. So Trump has got the he's going to get the the most ever votes than all the winners and losers yet still lose because Biden this election has got more votes than than he has amazing yeah it's amazing when there seems to be more votes uh voters than they have even registered voters in some states so uh i mean we're, we're, well, let's see what happens i mean i, I think the if the proper investigations occur then the question's got to be if the, if the if Democrats do get exposed, uh, whether it's in the Supreme Court or whatever, for significant vote or fraud, then that will be very interesting. But to my knowledge of the US Constitution, if that occurs, uh, then the Senate has to vote on who the next president will be, uh, and they have to vote according to party lines, which, I mean, Republicans control that. Um, so Trump would then, either that way, would be uh, become president. So, I mean, we can argue all we like. Um, I think, you know, we support honest and fair elections and we're clearly not seeing that. And I feel sorry for the people that uh, just get their snippets of news from mainstream media. They seem to be the same people that tend to vote for Biden. They don't really understand how the world works. They just get their snippets of news from mainstream media, which they think is news. And Tim, the Chinese citizens, at least in China, they know that the news is propaganda. They're very bemused by Westerners, Americans, Australians, English, why we seem to think our news is news and not propaganda. And two people wake up that they're not being told the truth. Uh, News is propaganda. It's a lie. When's the last time 
uh, mainstream media ever told the truth? It was before you and I were born. Uh, and when will they tell the truth? If they want to tell the truth, why don't they support proper audits and recounts and investigations into uh, the US election? Uh, I mean, maybe they just they've got the same people counting COVID deaths as they have counting Biden votes. And that's why Biden's mysteriously got all these extra votes, inflated, inflated amount of votes, because it's a bit like COVID, uh, the amount of people that apparently died of COVID. You know, you couldn't die of anything else in 2020 other than COVID. So let's face it, both are frauds. Uh, we should stop beating around the bush. They politicized the genders. And uh, part of the reason COVID was pushed so heavily was to try and remove Trump from office. Um, and uh, that would have certainly helped their cause a lot. But um, still, they had to rig it. And uh, I think, you know, we're, we're living in an illusion of democracy. We'd, unless this is caught out, this voter fraud is caught out, and the Democrats, you know, some of them sent to jail over this rigging of this election, then we can kiss goodbye to our democracy. But we pretty much know that. You, only have to, you live in Victoria, Tim, in Melbourne. Uh, when It's been a while now since you've seen democracy. You're living in a fascist police surveillance state. Uh, where you couldn't even leave your home, you know, unless, you know, at certain times of the day and five kilometer rule. And, and even though that's been relaxed a little bit, that, that's only relaxed for a short period of time before uh, they bring in uh, the new lockdowns. We've still got the, the helicopters and planes uh, circling over uh, the, the, the suburbs. Uh, we've, we've still got to wear the, the, the masks uh, whenever uh, we leave our uh, home, even though there's even if there is active uh, coronavirus uh, cases outside, you've got something like a one in six million chance of, of catching it if you're mm. all outside uh, uh, unmasked. Uh, but uh, you mentioned uh, Bi uh, Biden, he hardly had any uh, people at his rallies. That's because uh, uh, they were all scared of, uh, of COVID and that's why they, they mail it mailed in their uh, their votes uh, even though after the election they're all out on the streets in Washington uh, DC uh, but uh, the reason why <laughs> this was okay is because they're they're all wearing uh, masks uh, so they're taking a leaf out of the Dan book of uh, of science that it seems to be that if you're protesting or celebrating in public uh, if you wear a mask then you're immune from getting uh, the catching the the virus, or if you're a undiagnosed, then uh, immune from from passing on. Even though the the masks have little benefit from uh, uh, stopping the spread. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's just not that, Tim. It's not little benefit. They're actually dangerous. And uh, even F Fauci co-authored. You might have seen the report. He did co-author, uh, highlighting that most people in the Spanish flu didn't die of the flu. It wasn't a flu anyhow, and it wasn't Spanish. I mean, that's another lie we've been told for years. Most people, as a result, died of uh, bacterium pneumonia. And masks, and because they wear those that wore the masks, the ones that died in the Spanish flu predominantly. Masks are deadly. They're not healthy for you, and that's also another reason why they want you to wear them. They need to desperately, you know, just like they desperately to try and find Biden votes to rig the election, they desperately find cases of COVID. I mean, I mean, if people can't see, it's just like the protesting. If you protest for Black Lives Matter scam, funded by George Soros too, by the way, there's no dispute of billionaire George Soros, who's also behind, you know, the Democrats and Antifa, and you know, Antifa he funds, which is part of the Democratic organization, which is domestic terrorism. Imagine if, if Trump had a bunch of thugs with guns going around tearing down US streets like Antifa for the last six months. I mean, it, the, the media would just go crazy. So if you protest for Black Lives Matter, just like in Melbourne, that was perfectly fine. You're allowed to do that. But if you protest for anything that's not extreme far left fascism, then, um, of course, it's going to be an issue. I mean, if people can't see this as a politicized virus and that the U.S. election is a complete and utter fraud, um, then they simply watching too much propaganda and mainstream news and watching too much conspiracy theories pushed by the ABC, the Channel 7s, the CNN, the BBCs that lie to people on a day-to-day -day basis and they, they and no one bothers to ask questions or demand evidence. It's only people like you and I and, and many people now are waking up and COVID woke a lot of people up going, this just doesn't add up. And you mean, it's, it's, it's flu-like symptoms. When, I wonder why, you know, there's an article in mainstream media last week, Tim, 98% of flu cases in 2000, uh, dropped by 98% flu cases in 2020. And they write it as if they're surprised. 
Of course, it's no surprise because it just reclassified flu cases as coronavirus. I mean, anyone can check in the medical journals. Coronavirus is common cold, common flu. They've been around for decades. The PCR tests can't even test accurately for COVID. No, so, it can't. Yeah, what are they even testing for? I mean, anyone that still believes that COVID is not a politicized virus, is not an absolute fraud, is simply watching too much you know, news and wasting too much oxygen and cornflakes. The same people that seem to vote for Vibe not to be too political. But, I mean, God, anyone that's really educated about what's going on in the world would see through the, the fraud and see through the BS. And Australians are meant to have good BS detectors. But there's some people, I, I'm sure you've probably heard of them, Tim, and even in Melbourne, who think Dan Andrews has done a good job, saved them from some mystery virus. Wow. I mean, people need to man up. The chances of dying from COVID is about, if you're in a high-risk age bracket, is about 1 in 19.4 million. You've got more chance of being hit by hail and dying or lightning, or you swim in 114 chance of dying in America of a car accident. I mean, people, it's just humans, it's shown, I mean, if there's any aliens wanted to come to this planet, they would have saw what's going on in COVID and go, my God, these humans are so goddamn stupid. Where the hell out of here? You know what I'm saying? It's like humans need to develop the ability to think. Now, I'm not saying that of all people a lot of people do think but there's a lot of people that have been so conditioned since they went to school just to conform and obey authority and whatever they say is true but by hell they'll question anyone that has an opposing narrative to what cnn or or uh, abc news wants to tell us is true you know in australia right now they're telling us that joe biden's the next president they told us al gore was the u.s president as well but if people check history uh, has al gore ever been the united states president same fake news same nonsense uh, we're in Victoria at the moment. They're still testing uh, tens of thousands of people every day, uh, still finding no cases. They're not finding any needles in the haystack now, though they did find, what is it, one lady who she tested positive back in, uh, uh, back in I think it was uh, October, and so they suspected it'd be it's, vir it's virus shedding. Uh, so this, uh, so, so this is the thing. This, these PCR tests, there's because we've got so few cases now in Victoria, and the media gets alarmed over even just a few cases now. It's now being revealed just how many false positives there are in the uh, in these uh, PCR tests, and even so, <laughs> they're, they're still hardly fi uh, uh, fi finding any. And well, so right now we're up to, Tim, they're up to 50,000 a day. They were testing at one stage and they could find 286 cases at the peak of it. But it's like the first question you should always ask is what's your, what's your margin for error? I mean, any scientist or any doctor will go, what's your margin for error? They don't release the margin for error because they know the margin for error is high as 50 to 80%. The tests just simply don't work. And what are they testing for? COVID, technical COVID, if you have a cough, sore throat or sniffle, then you are listed without a test as COVID. Or worse, if you come into contact with anyone that ever had a cough or sore throat or a sniffle, then you're listed as COVID. Um, I mean, it's just, it's if people can't see that that's not a fraud, that basically means anyone on the planet can be listed as COVID. The tests don't work. They're not designed to work for that. Any uh, uh, fragments of having any, any flu ever will show up. I mean, it, it's such a pathetic joke that humans still fall for this. It's just, it's, it's really an embarrassment to be a human if people fall for this. It's, how much overwhelming evidence has to come out and how many brave doctors and scientists have to say this is a fraud before people accept it? Same thing will happen in the US election. If the TV box, idiot box tells people, oh, no, no, that's been debunked or no, that's not the case. Oh, yeah, that must be true then. I mean, humans have only themselves to blame and we're all in this together. If, if humans have themselves to blame, if they want to walk into a communist future and be jabbed with mandatory vaccinations by COVID next year, and give up all their freedoms, they just have to keep on doing what they're doing and supporting the criminal cartel behind the Democrats in America and the Dan Andrews in Australia. I mean, it's, I don't want to be too blunt, but you know, why are we wasting time on this planet if we're going to you know, keep on supporting lies pushed by liars? You mentioned uh, if aliens came to, to Earth during this year. I was getting to the stage in, well, August was, was pretty grim here in in melbourne when dan was announcing hundreds of cases per day and i was not getting depressed because there were all these cases there but because uh, dan was going to keep us in this lockdown in perpetuity and he's only just released us i i wouldn't even say we're fully released mm. from it yet given that it, all the uh, the rules 
uh, that that still still apply. And I, I know I harp on about uh, the the masks, but especially with the the warm weather coming up, you basically suffocate with them. But Dan, his chief health officer Brett Sutton, uh, his new health minister Martin Foley, and his uh, contact tracing chief Jerome Weimar, they they're all mask fetishes. They say that uh, masks have played a significant role in preventing the spread of the second wave and preventing a third wave, yet they haven't provided one shred of evidence. Yeah, no, these conspiracy theorists, um, you know, the Democrats, Labor, China, they're all in bed together. I mean, it's a globalist, socialist, one world agenda. It's a politicized virus. No one can argue with that. I mean, that's what I told to many people in Melbourne. If you think this is just something about a virus, that's why it doesn't happen. People go, well, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, there's not that many people dying or or the death rate, you know, turned out to be, as I said in the beginning, I call, it was the earliest to call bullshit on COVID and A&R did as well. And we proved, we've been proven ever since to be right. Um, you have to do third grade mathematics. No, it's a fraud. A bit like, you know, what you're seeing in the US election, third grade mathematics goes, um, you know, it just doesn't add up because it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, the mass fetish that Dan Andrews has, but it, remember, it's nothing about a virus, it's about control. It's about fascism. It's about dictating, controlling people and see how far they can get away with it before people push back. Um, and this is the, the danger we face. And this is the danger of tech companies, Will, uh, Tim, is that tech companies are able to, uh, have so much control over our lives right now and, and they have more power than the mainstream media. Um, and the, in, the, in the past, you probably couldn't, a small group of people couldn't control the world, but with technology, it's rapidly approaching the pine in time where everyone can be tracked on this planet with all the CCTV cameras being put up in Melbourne during the lockdowns flown in from China. Um, you know, China social score. If, you, if people are happy to live under a surveillance state and every aspect of their life tracked, and be um, basically put on a universal basic income next year, which is welfare, have the businesses destroyed, have no freedom, not be able to travel overseas unless you get a COVID vaccine, uh, not be able to have property ownership, uh, not be able to ever eat meat again. Uh, this is the ideology of the great reset of the people that are pushing this. And people need to wake up pretty soon. Otherwise, we're going to leave it to us too late when people realize oh, my God, the train uh, we've been sent on is sending us to a gas chamber and uh, we thought we are going on a holiday, you know. People need to not repeat history. Yeah, there's that uh, those memes that have been going around that if uh, Dan Andrews or, or some other globalist leader announced that uh, uh, people are going to be sent to uh, virus uh, protection camps, uh, they they raise their hand and, and jump on the, the, the train and... Uh, I'm sure you've heard about New Zealand's uh, quarantine camps. If you test uh, positive, uh, you'll be taken out of your home into these uh, 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 quarantine camps, which well, apparently have good uh, amenities. But yes, the historical uh, parallels should not be ignored. Yeah, I agree. And people have to realize this, that, um, and it's all for your good, greater good, apparently. You've got to understand the people that run, trying to run the world and influence and conspire and people go, it's a conspiracy theory. Well, no, it's the, definitely a conspiracy. That's true. Uh, unfortunately, it's no longer theory. Uh, the amount of involvement Bill Gates has in behind this. People can go and do their own research. Um, but, you know, although they can keep listening to conspiracy theories or mainstream media and think and live in a bubble and deny everything and think everything's going to be safe. But uh, I think 2020 should have woke enough people up to realize the world has gone crazy. Uh, we're not the crazy ones. We're just reporting on how crazy the world's become. I mean, we were speaking a year ago, Tim, and I said to you all the things that's happened in 2020 were going to happen. You would have said, I'm a conspiracy theorist, right? You said that's crazy. The world couldn't, that couldn't happen. But we've all witnessed it in 2020. It has actually happened. And I warned people in my book, The Great Vaccine Con, years ago that they're going to bring in mandatory vaccinations. I was fortunate enough because of brave doctors and scientists to be aware of uh, the fraud in the vaccine industry. And that's how I picked up on the fraud of COVID much sooner than others because of that insider information. Um, and I warned about this, they needed mandatory vaccinations to increase sales from 59 billion a year to over 100 billion. I mean, the amount of money Gates, et cetera, and them are going to make, and they're already announced today in Australia, they're trying to push through a COVID vaccine by March next year, even though this never, it hasn't had proper safety testing. Actually, Tim, did you know there's no vaccine ever has ever had proper double blind placebo, placebo 
safety testing. So this industry needs a lot of scrutiny. It's about bottom line profits, a second home in Aspen or, or Switzerland for the vaccine executives. It's nothing to do with the child's health. How many people, and I put up a million dollar challenge for this, how many of our elderly have been killed by the flu vaccines? The amount of evidence that's coming out of that. I mean, yeah, if you look in South Korea, how many just died recently? I think there are over 100 already. Um, but there are any deaths that come out by vaccines, and there'll be many deaths and injuries from COVID vaccine, of course. Um, and But they won't list them as COVID vaccine deaths. They'll list them as COVID deaths uh, when they'll use that to inject people with more vaccines. This is why you've got to take the vaccine because you could die. That's how the industry works. When they kill people, they spin it, that the disease killed them, and that's why you need to take our vaccine. Uh, otherwise, you could have died when it was a vaccine that killed people and injured people. Uh, I mean, that's not, that's not conspiracy theory. That's fact. Uh, and that's why I put up a million dollar challenge uh, back in 2016. Robert Kennedy Jr., JFK's nephew, who is an advocate for supporting vaccine um, uh, victims. Uh, Robert De Niro put up 100,000 as well um, because his son has autism and he believes that autism was caused by vaccines, which is you know quite controversial, but it hasn't been debunked. There's plenty of studies that highlight that. So when people start to understand this is all tied in together, uh, the vaccine fraud, COVID fraud, the election fraud in the US, it's all similar, the same sort of people behind the scenes that are driving a political agenda. And we can either choose to live in a bubble and deny all that, um, but when they come to jab you next year, you can't leave, leave Australia uh, next year unless if you want to go overseas, unless you take a COVID vaccine. Uh, if you want to know, if you know what's in a COVID vaccine, you would never touch one of these COVID vaccines. Uh, we've got a super chat over here on uh, Entropy, uh, the, the YouTube enhanced software from the Versace Cowboy for uh, $3.33 uh, Australian dollars, triple three. You've got more chance of dying from hypothermia after pissing your pants at Fed Square from COVID-19. Yes, that is exactly true, Versace Cowboy. Uh, also, <laughs> my, my moderator, uh, Margot, I put it up on the, the screen, uh, that the teachers are constantly telling kids at school the masks are there to protect the community. And I've also heard that uh, they've, tur they've uh, turned off or put uh, tape at all the, the water fountains at schools because apparently shared... Uh, it, it, it shared uh, communal things like that can spread COVID. So at, at school now, the children are suffocating with the heat with these masks. Their year 12s were forced to do uh, their year 12 exams with masks. Uh, this oh, week, yeah, they can't. They can't get uh, their their water fill up their water bottles at at schools. Like, uh, what's it going to yeah, take a child to collapse? And Tim, this is part of the problem we've had in the world. This hasn't just snuck up on us. We have to accept responsibility for the way the shape the world's in and where they can think they can do a globalist communist takeover of the world and think they can get away with it without us going, hang on, we're not going to accept communism. Out, you know, today is Remembrance Day. You know, how many um, uh, previous generations had to lose their lives in trenches to fight for our so-called freedoms? And here we are in a global war and the war is a propaganda war uh, and trying to take over from the inside out. That's why, you know, we always thought the United Nations would be the one world government. It's turned out to be the World Health Organization, which is not a political organization. It's it's owned and run and funded by predominantly Bill Gates. And the president has been on the pay, payroll of Bill Gates for a long time. It's his little baby. And they figured out how to circumnavigate our federal laws around the world. That's why dictator Dan Andrews was able to get away with what he did and Scott Morrison couldn't do anything about it because under emergency health powers, uh, your World Health Organization is running the world. That's how they're able to get the, the COVID test scams working and how they inflate the deaths because whatever who says, all the medical associations around the world follow that and then the doctors are required to follow it even though many doctors are going, why can't we use hydrochloroquine? It used to be allowed to be used. Now we're not allowed to use it. You know why you can't use it? Because Gates and Fauci want their vaccines pushed through, COVID vaccines, and they can't get past push through with emergency approval without proper testing if there's alternative treatments. So you've got all this nonsense going on. So the point of being there with the schools, we've allowed our schools to become socialist schools. We're taught at school by, a, it's a socialist agenda. It's a propaganda. It's not school. It's not an education. Mark Twain always said, don't let schooling get in the way of a good education. And that's why I wrote my first book, What I Didn't Learn at School But Wish I Had, back 20 years ago, highlighting that 
you know, I was one of the students in the back of the class asked, how's trigonometry algebra, uh, uh, trigonometry algebra going to help me get where I want to go in life? So some students relate to that because they ask the same questions, but too many people bought the lie uh, of conformity and they've been propagated to since they went to school. And as a result of that, um, we have people that can't think for themselves and these are the people that are manipulated in politics they, because they lie to them and they get them to vote for the left-wing politics and they think they, they're doing the right thing, but they're just manipulated by, because they think the news is news, it's propaganda. They think what they taught at school is true. Now, they're pushing climate change propaganda, and we're going to see that back in the news soon uh, because it's all the same agenda. What's behind climate change propaganda? What's behind COVID propaganda? What's behind uh, all these things? It's a one-world centralised government agenda where we have no national sovereignty and a bunch of people overseas uh, can dictate to us that we have to wear masks, that we uh, we can't go five kilometres out of our house. Or you're being a bad boy, you've got a bad social score, you're now confined to your home. You're not allowed to cross a border, imaginary border in, in, in their country. You can't leave the country. Um, sorry, your uh, bank account no longer works because you posted something on Facebook, fascist book, that wasn't liked. Uh, you now will be deleted. Uh, sorry, you have to remain in detention until you hand over all your assets. Sorry, you're not allowed to eat meat anymore because we don't like that. So these nutcases, and you can see Klaus is one of them that's pushing the Great Reset World Economic Forum. Go and see some of his Twitter posts. These are mad, crazy communists, and they want to tell you they know what's best for you and your grandchildren. Uh, wake up, people. Uh, the world's We are at war, and let's hopefully we can win this propaganda war because if we don't win it through propaganda, we're going to end up having to be in the trenches, and today is Remembrance Day, and we might want to remember if you don't have to be fighting in the trenches or have your, your children fighting in the trenches and dying uh, to defend yourself against these people, uh, then we need to win this war, and we need to win it by waking people up to knowing what the truth is, and uh, you'll know if people are awake because they don't Re parrot mainstream media nonsense um and uh they know what the hell's going on they've done some basic research uh, the the fight for freedom is is ongoing sure there's there's more uh obvious threats uh to freedom as there there have been in 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 world wars but uh, it's it's an ongoing one uh, we should Go back to the the beginning of the year where this virus was born, uh, Wuhan, China, which uh, we saw the the images coming out of China, people collapsing mm. in the the street supposedly of this virus. We now know that it's it's propaganda. This virus never, you, you were never walk, as walking down the street one time and then vomiting up your internal organs and and <laughs> and, and dying. Uh, but uh, we, we've seen the uh, the propaganda from Wuhan after their uh, well literal house arrest uh lockdown for 76 days they were they're all let out and then there was that giant pool party that they had in wuhan with no mask and and social distancing the the propaganda from uh the place of origin was that lockdowns are the the only way to get rid of this virus and i re referred to the melbourne model which is well we got as close to a wuhan style lockdown uh as uh, you could get away with in the, the the west and the the people in the melbourne public housing towers they experienced uh, uh, a wuhan style uh, house arrest and and dan every day now says oh we've got these low case numbers because the strategy worked and now we're seeing the melbourne model rolled out in in europe where it looks like they're going to be in lockdown for for christmas in the uk and of course uh, uh dr fauci you mentioned before praising uh melbourne for uh, this eradication strategy which took uh, 112 days and has ruined our economy caused so much uh, mental health issues and I don't think we'll we'll ever get rid of this uh, police state that we currently have here in Victoria. Um, certainly, if Trump loses, no, um, you know, and that's why people, a lot of so-called intelligent people, don't understand why so many people voted for Trump that even don't like Trump. And one, it's not a personality context, but two, um, there's one side fighting for democratic rights and protecting our freedoms. There's another side that's in bed with China, Gates, Soros, and Co 
that are supporting this globalist uh, communist takeover. They think they know what's best for you and your children. Uh, and, you know, it's, that's dangerous. Um, you know, it is very dangerous. So, and part of that is mandatory vaccinations of COVID, which is going to kill many people and, you know, it's, you know slow death committing suicide um, and there are other agendas behind that. So um, it, it, it's, it's very concerning, Tim. We've got to really fight back. Dan Andrews, uh, I mean, I mean, the guy I've, I've, you know, two GB Ben Fordham tried to have a go at me a, f a month or two ago, saying I was inciting violence when I said that Dan Andrews can never expect to be able to walk down the street safely when he's no longer premier in the future in Victoria. Uh, and I say, no, I wasn't inciting violence. I'm just commentating what the reality is. If he, if he's deluded enough to think that he can walk down the streets of Victoria and be safe, then he, the guy's an idiot. Really, the guy needs to flee, and he should flee now uh, and do us all a favor and flee to his communist masters in China, or maybe billionaire uh, George Soros might put him up in one of his houses. But the question is, whose orders is, is he following? He's certainly not following the Australian Prime Minister's orders. Um, and I dare say he's following, you know, Brett Sutton, the, the um, health minister or uh, medical officer. I mean, he has undisclosed conflicts with Bill Gates and he works for Bill Gates Funded Institute and, and uh, the received funding. So everywhere you look, the modelling that was put to the to the public early in the year, where that shut causes the, to shut down the governments to to freak out and do these lockdowns in the first place, was Gates funded modelling, which even though it was redacted several days later, Neil Ferguson, you know, Imperial College, uh, and Do I think Doherty Institute had something to do with it here in Australia. The modelling has said 160,000 Australians were going to die by April this year, uh, millions in America, you know, 600,000 UK. That, that caused us to commit economic suicide, which has led to more su actual suicide deaths than people have really died of COVID. I mean, I put up a million-dollar challenge to show me anyone scientifically died of COVID. I'm not saying some people haven't died of COVID, but I'd just like to see the scientific proof of one person because it's prudent. to If they're going to destroy economies and destroy business and destroy his lives, put up some proof. It's the time of allowing the media and government to say things without evidence is over. We need to start calling out bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And the words people and voters should be saying every day, I call bullshit. I call bullshit on CNN. I call bullshit on ABC. I call bullshit on Dan Andrews. Put up the evidence uh, or we're calling bullshit on it because it's, there's no more time to accept these conspiracy theories that Dan Andrews pushes, the conspiracy theories of our mainstream media. We want to see the evidence because those of us who go and do the research, we find the evidence. And the evidence is, is that masks are dangerous and deadly and have done nothing. The lockdowns have done nothing. Even um, the World Health Organization, some of the good, honest people in there have stated very clearly that lockdowns shouldn't be used. Uh, and the countries that haven't done lockdowns, here's what I find ironic, Tim. Taiwan, not a member of who? No pandemic. It seems like to be a, have a pandemic in your country, you had to sign up to who and follow whose advice. Taiwan is right next to China. Chinese come there and come all the time. They just did proper trace checking and hardly any deaths, no, no uh, oppressive lockdowns. Melbourne had some of the most oppressive lockdowns, worse than China, I would say, in many cases. And uh, to think Dan Andrews is going to say, just like in Queensland, oh, it's our harsh border stance that so saved, saved us. I mean, it's just a fraud upon a fraud. The, the lockdowns when they first hit them should have been removed the same number of days after when the, it was that modelling that Neil Ferguson was done was realised to be completely fraudulent and that was funded by Gates to scare governments into lockdown. Once they realised that was not the case, they should have stopped the lockdowns there and then. Um, but no, they didn't. They continue to persist because they can't admit they were fooled Many of the politicians, the rest of the politicians, Tim, aren't full because they're easily bought, they're easily owned. Um, and uh, I'd love to know how much money Dan Andrews received from um, into his bank accounts uh, because I'm happy to make a bet that he's received large amounts of money into his bank accounts uh, um, for doing what he's done. And if he doesn't like me saying that, he's welcome to sue me, but he's too gutless. Dan Andrews, you need to flee the country. You're a disgrace as a human being. You're a disgrace as a Victorian. You're a disgrace as an Australian. And uh, if the real people, if you heard what real people think of you, then you would leave this country now.
Well, I've already had his uh, his electorate office, which is unmanned at the moment. That's been uh, vandalised twice. Uh, the meme going around is that uh, Victoria Police narrowed it down to six million uh, suspects, and uh, uh, there's a uh, it's in motion now a petition to to getting p- kicked out of his uh, golf club, uh, Kingston Heath, uh, given uh, how. Often uh, he's uh, banned and uh, restricted golf over uh, 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 2020. I doubt he'd be welcome at the (laughs) Kingston Heath golf course ever again. Some people have speculated that the golf ban was just to spite Sam Newman, who's been one of his uh, uh, biggest critics here. Uh, But uh, Andrews and Sutton have done hours and hours of press conferences where they've admitted to things such as, yes, all uh, people who died of other causes but had COVID with their si- uh, in their system are classified as COVID uh, oh. deaths. And uh, Dan often talks about, oh, even if you uh, recover, it can cripple your internal organs for, for, for life. Yes, those with pre-existing conditions, it does exacerbate uh, those uh, conditions after they've recovered but i know uh, because there was so many so much community transmission during this uh, second wave here the, uh, i've got friends who are diagnosed with the coronavirus they've recovered in days and are fine now and can't believe wow we were locked down for this yeah i mean it's a joke but you got to understand is that people think they've even people that have been diagnosed with covid only think they've got covid the test kits don't work. They're not even designed to test for COVID. And once again, what is COVID? According to the clinical definition of COVID, a cough, sore throat, or sniffle, or if you come into contact with anyone that has that. That means COVID is basically any, they're lobbing in any amount of flus you've ever had or can get as COVID. Uh, they're lobbing in anything. So if you're going to go by that, then COVID is nothing. So it's two things that really happen is either one, they did create something out of a lab and why aren't they going after Gates and Fauci for the funding of the Wuhan lab to create the coronavirus, which has been patented. And that, that was released it, deliberately or inadvertently. And that did go around the world to some parts, but only reached so many people and probably fizzled out. The rest of the cases are just flu cases. Let's face it. Um, so no one can scientifically prove they've ever had COVID on the entire planet because they don't have a proper test for it. So this is how absurd it is. So that any lockdowns or community transmission, I don't care. Last year, last winter, we didn't care about who caught the flu. We I got the flu it. in the winter of 2019. So did uh, many of my uh, colleagues on our Uncuckables program. I was so sick, mm. bedridden for uh, a week. And it was a a, a, a deadly flu season but yeah. we didn't shut down the the whole of the victorian uh economy uh i certainly suffered with when, when i had the the flu but i recovered uh i'm fine now when we moved on that's right you, you know you man up and you know and you get over it you know like and and true if it doesn't matter if you're sick and got terminal cancer and have three heart attacks um and then you die because you get the flu don't blame the flu really come on um but the point is that um out of the 800 or thousand people that claim in australia died of COVID, we know it's only about nine percent didn't have other comorbidities and that nine percent would need more uh investigation it's six percent in the us which i always i guess they made it well in advance um but those few that do have it uh they, they just got the flu so yes you can die of things you know everyone's going to die um there's a risk to everything you can't go stop living because of a sniffle uh, and especially and when I told said early in the year I said Tim I said I mean this is going to come in even a lower than a bad flu season and people going crazy because they listen to too much mainstream media but since then I've been proven right uh, last year's flu season in Australia killed about 1500 people this year if you take the nine percent of say the the thousand people that apparently died of COVID you're looking at about 90 people it's actually been a very it's a very low deaths uh, from COVID flu uh, if you want to call it that um, so it's not particularly deadly um, in comparison to anything else. It's just irrational, as we know. But we that's why there's no point in even talking about that because it's nothing to do with a flu. It's they can't sell communism and lock us down and bring in this new world order um, without a Trojan horse. And the global warming theory, global warming s- a scam they were trying to push, wasn't urgent enough. Even when they brainwashed Greta, still wasn't urgent enough because people were like, 
you know, we're not going to accept, I'm mean, all for protecting the environment. That's why I don't support the global warming theory because I want to actually do something to help the environment, not help Al Gore's bank accounts, not help a centralised one world government. You know what I'm saying? That didn't work. So they needed, they'd already planned and the best Trojan horse is a virus. Uh, and Gates had been warning, you know, that there's going to be a world global pandemic, you know, of course, warning. Of course, we know Gates because you and Fauci and others were planning to do it. Uh, you know, we know about event 201, you know, and that's not exactly not a public available information. So, so many, the way the mainstream media has been able to hide these lies for years is they simply say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory, Pizzagate conspiracy theory. Oh, that's been debunked without any evidence other than Snopes or oh, fact checkers. Eight oh, that, 20, on yeah. Facebook, uh, but if you post anything about potential election fraud, you now get about 10 different uh, fact-checking fact things. But it's interesting if you actually click through to them. So, for example, with the, the fact that uh, voter turnout in places like Michigan, Wisconsin, exceeded mm -hmm. who was on the electoral roll, they yeah. said, oh, it's because you can register and vote on the, on the same day. And you sort of think to yourself, that's still sort of dodgy that you can register and vote on the same day. And they said, oh, the fact that there's dead people on the electoral rolls doesn't prove that they voted for Biden. Yeah, but it oh, proves the potential for voter fraud. And they said about, the, there's that footage of that, uh, I think Philadelphia a, a vote counter filling out uh, ballots. And it said, no, yeah. he's just uh, filling out new ballots because the old ones were damaged. That's still dodgy. Uh, and that's why they pushed that they can count votes for days and days after in Pennsylvania, which they knew would come down to Pennsylvania, generally always does. Uh, I mean, that's the point, Tim, and you'd know. doesn't matter how much overwhelming evidence is presented to coverts of fraud, even by doctors and scientists that I listen to, how much evidence that there's election fraud. I mean, when I put up that challenge, the amount of people that were sending in evidence of the fraud, I, I mean, we can't keep up with it. I mean, it's just so much. Um that but humans all the mainstream media has to say no it's a conspiracy theory it's been debunked and use snopes which is a joke <laughs> i mean fact checkers 18 to 20 um members of the committee for fact checkers if people want to check out have direct links to george soros billionaire that's on his you uh, know, who, who fact checks the fact checkers, checkers. Yeah, so fact checkers, are, they're not fact checkers, they're censors just like political correctness is not political correctness it's censorship it's a Trotsky, study Trotsky, it's communism. Attack the person, uh, not the ball. Okay, so you know, all they attack is Trump, 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 his hairstyle, his personality, this and that. Trump's an idiot. My God, have you seen your nominee try and sw string two sentences together? I mean, creepy, sleepy Joe Biden. I mean, it's just, I feel sorry for, but here's what happens a lot of the in so called intelligent people, Tim. Um, see, most people have been sold the lie that academia equals academia equals intelligence. So, and so those of us that started to ask questions at school and university, hang on a minute, this, what we've been told doesn't really add up. And we become more rebellious. So entrepreneurs or uh, you know, people that really want to go out and start their own question school system earlier and left a little bit earlier. Most successful people dropped out of college. So the lie they were bought of, of, of was conformity, formal education equals success. So they bought conformity longer, went for three years or six years to uni. So they're now so indoctrinated and they also were told that degrees equal intelligence. But I know a lot of intelligence. I know a lot of people with more degrees than brains. But these are the sort of people, and some of my friends are like this, and don't worry, I say it, say, I'm happy to offend them as well because I don't believe in political correctness. So if any viewers get offended, we, we want some people to get offended. Why are you getting offended? More degrees than brains? Well, these sort of people will, will are more likely to be easily manipulated by mainstream media, more likely to vote for the likes of Joe Biden because they haven't done detailed research and they're worried what their friends will think, Tim. So you'll see this. A lot of people won't speak up about the obvious COVID fraud uh, because they're worried they might get embarrassed by their friends. Now, if you're a doctor or professional and don't know the truth, they're particularly worried what their friends are going to think. So these are the so-called intelligent people in society are the ones that most easily manipulate. And they tend to vote more for the far left um, and, and they support something that one day they will wake up and realize I'm a friggin' idiot. Because I voted for organizations that actually don't support my values. Like they voted for Hillary Clinton, but she's a warmonger. They vote, they're meant to, the left's meant to be against the war, but they support the warmongers. They hate Trump, but not to get political, but Trump's the first president 
in probably I don't know how many decades or probably a, since a long time that never went to war. That's a pretty good mark there for America. Didn't actually go to war, pulled Americans out of war. But they would have voted for Hillary Clinton, that is a, a warmonger, but they're meant to be, the left's meant to be for peace and pro, uh, pro, protesting. They're meant to be for uh, looking after the, the less, the more vulnerable in society, yet they vote for a bunch of pedophiles on, on the left that are covering up pedophile and sexual abuse rings. I mean, wow, that might get a bit controversial, but you can't say this stuff on mainstream media. Why? Because it has to be censored, because we're not allowed to talk about the truth. We're only allowed to talk about the bullshit that mainstream media wishes to feed people with their conspiracy theories every day. Uh, it was also absurd that they, they called Trump a, a fascist, even though during when all those state governors were, were locking down uh, locking down their, their states, putting people under house arrest, he was tweeting, liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate... Uh, Virginia, is that the sort of thing a a fascist police state person tweets? Liberate these states, let people be free. Yeah, it's, it's it's so it's it's I, I but I really feel sorry for them because some of these people I know some of my friends not no, not many but um some because they're my friends I give them a good talking to and wake the hell up you know we can't have these people lead us across the edge over a cliff and destroy humanity we're all in a detention center going how the hell did this happen well ask the Jews how it happened to them you know uh, but the point being is that you know. We can't wait till these people wake up and realize the truth. Uh, and the good thing about COVID, let's look at some positives, is that it caused many people to realize uh, mainstream media is a fraud. And uh, more and more people have woken up than ever. So that's good news. September 11th really started the turning point, I think, when people started to question 9-11, go, hang on a minute, this official narrative just doesn't add up when you do the, sci the research and look what scientists have to say. But COVID, definitely. So their plan was to try and con people into uh, a, a Trojan horse, use COVID as a Trojan horse to push through this globalist great reset that's coming, a uh, communist agenda. Then it certainly could have backfired because it woke a lot of people up. But has it woke enough up in enough time to, to stop this agenda achieving its goal? And uh, that's why the US election was so pivotal. If, if Trump does lose... Um, you know, that does put a major setback to stopping fascism and stopping uh, a centralised one world government that with technology, it, it's, it, it's very dangerous if people knew where this world's heading. We have to push back. Otherwise, we're going to have to get guns and it's going to end up in war. And I'd rather win this war through wo uh, words, Tim. Uh, it's a propaganda war and we have to, to speak the truth uh, because the truth they're trying to censor. Because why? The truth will liberate people the truth will let people come out of their denial or slumber or their prop uh their what would you call their trance their hypnosis i mean let's face it, it's not easy to come out of hypnosis and realize the most things you've been taught since you went to school is a lie it's very unsettling for people to realize the world's run by a bunch of pedophiles uh and that that sex child trafficking industry is overtaking the drugs trade and illegal weapons trade that's how big it is we're talking over 39 billion a year in sales you can't get an industry that big without a lot of high-level government uh, support. Um, so these are some horrible things that the world's going to have to deal with. And uh, some people just rather live in denial, but denial is not going to be very nice for much longer when you get locked down again in Melbourne, Tim. Uh, I mean, who's going to be game enough when those borders open, when you can get across the Murray without being machine gunned to, de de to death by Victorian police officers? I'm sure uh, they're, they're estimating 450,000 Victorians will flee Victoria. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of my videos. I told more people to leave. I think as much as a million Victorians could leave. Um, and uh, and I certainly don't, I bet if they don't leave when the borders open, I bet they leave before winter sets in next year. Yeah, the, 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 the summer uh, escape window, I call it. So uh, Gladys Berejiklian has set uh, November 23rd uh, for when uh, she's going to open the New South Wales Victoria uh, border. Uh, South Australia is apparently making a decision this Friday. Uh, Tasmania, they've set the date November 27th. Uh, your Premier, uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk, has uh, said uh, oh, things are looking good for at the start of the month to let in Victorians and 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 Sydney siders. Uh, certainly, uh, I think, well, the, the mainstream media, uh, they will do something useful and count themselves 
at the the, the Murray Murray River uh, on November the twenty third, and I'll be very interested in in seeing the amount of of, of traffic there and the people that want to come to uh, Victoria for to settle or a holiday. I'd say uh, I'll, I'll use a pop culture reference: go back, go back, run for your lives. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll be one-way traffic. I'm not sure any uh, Queenslanders or New South Wales or anywhere in Australia wants to go to Melbourne for Christmas. I mean, I've lived there for 15 years up until a couple of years ago. So when I speak, you know, hardly or bluntly about Melbourne, I am a a fellow Melbourian. And uh, and I know many of my friends who can't wait to escape. Some already have done the 14-day quarantine to get out of here. But uh, I'm concerned for the future. Victoria, uh, you know, is a testing ground for the resilient cities, uh, strong city network. That's why you see Victorian police behaving in a very un-Australian way. Uh, many of them deserve to go to jail. And, and when there's a new political system come to power, eventually when we get rid of these criminals, many of them will go to jail just like Dan Andrews will. Uh, that's, what, that's why I warn politicians in this country, we are watching you. Uh, police officers, you're being videoed and recorded. You step out of line, do anything wrong, you will go to jail. And any politicians that have done what Dan Andrews has done, you're definitely going to jail. You're tre- treasonous and a traitor to, to our country. And any politician, I would say, Tim, that is supporting mandatory vaccinations, the COVID vaccine next year, or doesn't state very publicly they do not support mandatory or anything like mandatory vaccinations of COVID, uh, is a traitor to the Australian people, is in bed with uh, the vaccine makers. They, they take our taxpayers' money to represent the people. They can't be taking uh, bribes and incentives and working for the vaccine and drug companies. They're traitors to our country. We don't need a COVID vaccine. Uh, it's, it's not necessary. Uh, and COVID, as we know, is a fraud. And these fraudsters for trying to pull off this fraud belong in jail. Uh, or in some countries, if you commit treason, such as the United States of America, you could face the death penalty. So until the fear that they're trying to put into us is of, of locking us down and taking away our rights to put onto them, uh, then we're going to see these cowards, these criminals, think they can continue to fool the masses uh, with their spruker networks of fake news mainstream media and these fascist Facebook uh, tech company dictator companies and this is where the people really have to fight back. So what I would encourage is that we're all in this together, Tim, because so many people think that they can't do enough. It's just me. Well, there's a whole army of people around the world that's growing rapidly. The army I call for the force for good of people that support democratic rights, support civil liberties and support human freedoms. And that army is growing and we have to stay connected and work with each other. And it's up to all of us to participate. Everyone. Now, one individual can't save the world, but collectively we can. These people, we outnumber them and we don't have to accept their dictatorial orders. I mean, I can't say that if if our Queensland Premier tried to make us wear a mask, I doubt I would wear a mask, okay? Uh, And I don't, if she tries that sort of Dan Andrews type stuff in Queensland, the challenge she'll have is there's a lot more farmers in Queensland, there's a lot more guns and political revolution happens in Queensland. And I don't advocate violence, but I can tell you now, uh, many Australians will go to arms before they'll accept a mandatory COVID vaccination. And most Australians will go to arms before they accept communism. So um, these people have these agendas and need to, uh, uh, they need to be warned what's going to happen. Uh, last resort, we will, uh, people, Australians will go to war before they accept a fascist uh, police state that they're trying to push in Victoria. It seems that these crushing lockdowns that we've had in, in Melbourne and Victoria, which they're rolling out in, in Europe and the, the UK, uh, they're designed to basically demoralise the people that they think that the only way uh, to get out of this uh, perpetual lockdown uh, uh, lockdown system or cycle uh, because definitely these well the the second lockdown we experienced here in in melbourne was way worse uh, than the first and that's what people in the uk are experiencing now that the vaccine is the the only ticket to normal uh, and i heard even uh, gideon rosner of the the institute of public affairs say that yeah i'd i'd open my arm up for the the, the vaccine if it meant that i could uh, go to the uh, the pub again, and uh, we've heard the news uh, about the uh, the uh, Pfizer uh, vaccine. But uh, the the one that uh, the first one that Australia locked in, uh, because Scott Morrison he's proud of his uh, of introducing the the no jab no pay policy. He said that he w- initially wanted the vaccine to be as mandatory as possible. He's changed his messaging to free and voluntary. But I think we should take him at his initial word that 
mandatory as possible while still being voluntary. I'm sure you get get what I mean. The the Oxford uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, the, the the day after the election, they said oh, it might be ready by Christmas, and they're they're even manufacturing the Oxford vaccine here at the the CSR factory in Broadmeadows, even though it hasn't got uh, therapeutic goods administration approval. They're they're already making the the drug here in Melbourne. For I think the timeline is they want to roll that out by January. Yeah, it's absurd. So first of all, the first lie is that uh, once you take the COVID vaccine, then we'll let you out of lockdowns. I mean, one, it's a mafia extortion, basically, a simple mafia tactic. But two, it's a lie. They're not going to let you down after that. They're just going to say that to get you to take it. Then there's going to be multiple COVID vaccines every year. Bill Gates has already mentioned that. One, that's that's the better business model. You just don't want to sell one vaccine. You want to sell multiple. Uh, the vaccines are RNA vaccines. They're the new DNA engineered vaccines that they can change and adjust your your DNA, these vaccines have nanotechnology in them that where they will be able to track and link you to 5G. Uh, they'll have a vaccine chip in them. Once this was just a conspiracy theory, all this stuff is now proven. Uh, you can go research and check it out. So basically, you'll eventually pay through the chip that's inside you. Uh, you'll be tracked every minute, everywhere you go with CCT footage. Your health, uh, you will be reading your health and sending that to a centralized database, which Gates, et cetera, then will own and they'll make a fortune off all the health database they'll collect. Um, so if you even if you drink a bit of alcohol, that will be reported back to a centralized government body. If you ever took any drugs, that'll be central. Everything about your internal body will be tracked. Everything externally will be tracked. You will be a prisoner of technology and of a centralized one world government. That's part of the agenda behind COVID vaccines. It's got nothing to do with you stopping to get COVID because you don't need a vaccine for that. The flus have been around for a long time and the flu vaccines have never stopped flus. They've actually only killed the elderly, which is another reason why they have them. Um, so it, it's just absurd. So people have got to be aware of that. Now, some people go, well, I want to fly overseas next year. That's why they're going to do it. Mandatory, not quite mandatory, but people go, shit, I want to fly overseas. I'll take the vaccine. Yeah. Anyone that does that, I can understand why they think they'll do that. But Tim, the danger is they're just ignorant, uneducated. People don't want to know how bad these vaccines are. I mean, these are drugs. They're pushing drugs. These are drug spruikers pushing drugs upon vulnerable elderly people in aged care homes. They're pushing drugs upon our children. I don't know when I where I grew up. If that if people were pushing drugs on kids, uh, you'd punch them in the face and uh, they'd be locked up. But it's okay for these spruikers in Parliament. So here's what I suggest. My, if you're so um, proud of your no jab, no pay, Morrison, we're going to have a national um, and, and, um, jab your uh, poly day next year in Australia when the COVID vaccine does come out. We're going to get all the politicians in a country that support this vaccine and where all the, all the 25 million Australians are going to jab the, the COVID vaccine into each of the politicians and in each of your families because we just want to see that you know it's 100% safe, etc. So you politicians and your family will take these vaccines and we're going to jab the hell out of you with these vaccines. And if you have any objection to that, please state clearly what your objection is because it's going to be mandatory as possible. And uh, sorry, if you don't take it, we're going to put you in a detention centre. If you don't take it, we're going to cut off your salary. If you don't take it, you're never flying again. Uh, if you don't take it, sorry, we're going to keep your kids. There's already laws passed where they can take your kids next year from school uh, and the teachers aren't allowed to tell the, the parents where the kid's been taken to. They've been taken out of school and placed in detention or, or quarantine, they will call it. Well, they, they'd be jabbed. There's already laws in Australia that you, uh, they can vaccinate your children with, and the children aren't, don't have to have your parents' permission. I mean, who owns the children? The government? That's what they want. This is a socialist communist. I want to destroy the family structure. Uh, they want to basically own every aspect of you. There's already a baby's being vaccinated with the vaccine chip now on this planet. They're being tested tens and tens of thousands of them. So you'll be tracked and chipped from the day you're born to the day you die. You'll be owned. You'll have a serial number on and Bill Gates and co will own your ass. And that's a nice world to look forward to. So if you're happy with that and happy for your children, grandchildren to live in that future, you don't have to do anything. Don't say anything. Don't speak up because you wouldn't want your friends thinking that you're into conspiracy theories now, would you? Why you watch the 6 p.m. news and, 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 and scoop up as many conspiracy theories without facts as as you possibly can i mean come on people god gave you a brain we have to start using it uh, we had uh, acting immigration minister uh, alan tudge last month talk about the the new uh, digital uh, uh international passenger declaration which he he spruked uh, would have a, would be able to carry a, a digital 
vaccination uh, pass. So Scott Morrison, Alan Tudge, they're pretty open about it. Now, I've heard a lot of, um, well, sp 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 spoken with um, similar people to yourself about the, uh, the, the microchips and the, the, the 5G surveillance, but we're seeing with these, I, I don't think that that's even, uh, those sort of things are even necessary. And plus they're, 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 they're too obvious. We're seeing with this, a QR code check-in system because they announced in New South Wales uh, uh, QR check-in codes are going to be mandatory and all being used in, in, in New South Wales. Uh, more and more people are getting smartphones. Uh, that is going basically that QR smartphone uh, tracking technology because you won't be able to go anywhere. You won't be able to go to the pub or, or dream world or anywhere unless you uh, check in with your your smartphone and they had a, a flop of an attempt at this with with COVID safe and uh, they've even well, lambasted Dan Andrews for not getting on the the QR code system because he just has the pen and paper sign in uh, system to protect people's privacy uh, so there's not this uh, digital log uh, amazingly, uh, but you'll get your freedom of movement and association back, but you'll be watched all the time. Yes, and Edward Snowden um, did warn us about this, Julian Assange, WikiLeaks. So these were all considered conspiracy theories before 2020. So uh, 2020 was probably one year where so many conspiracy theories become proven um, so if you want to know what the future is, just listen to people that are apparently conspiracy theorists because they can predict the future. Um, I've been very good at predicting the future, and it's not because I have a crystal ball or some amazing insight. It's simply because I research and know what they're planning. I'm just commentating on what they're planning. So then that's how we're able to know what the future is. Um, it, yes, of course, it's a communist tactic. It's tracking every inch of the way. We don't need 5G uh, of course, 5G is not healthy for us. I mean, um, so we don't need any of this, but that's the plan. And guess who has big investments all the way behind 5G and health centralized databases? It all leads back, to, all roads roads lead to Rome, all paths around this lead back to Bill Gates, George Soros, uh, these front men for the cabal, the criminal organizations that uh, try. And, and J John F. K. warned us about these people. Uh, they operate in the shadows of our society and they try and influence events. Uh, they conspire. The idea that people don't conspire to achieve their preset determined agendas is just nonsense. Like, of course they do. They're conspiring all the time. And the danger is now they're getting much more powerful because technology is merging. And uh, you remember the movie Terminator, Skynet? And uh, I think people might need to watch and revisit that again because... Um, you know, the danger is with AI, 5G technology, uh, these chips, nanotechnology, it's all merging. And who's regulating to make sure that there's privacy, reg reg regulating to make sure there's not a small group of elite people who can't get control of all this data and information and c centralized government. That's what they want. Centralized government does not work. Centralized banking has been a fraud as well. That's why I was an early supporter of Bitcoin. Um, and uh, one of the wrote one of, wrote one of the first books on that, and uh, because it was decentralized currency, I'm all supporting decentralization. That's what we need because we do not want the power in the hands of any small group of people. We've seen centralized banking, what they did, where they skimmed the system and wrought it. Uh, the banking system for years lining their pockets and becoming so powerful they could buy up industries, buy up politicians, buy up news networks, etc. These are dangers to our so-called democracy. So we have to push back um, if we want to maintain our freedoms. But we are at a very dangerous time in humanity. And, uh, you know, and I don't think people realize that. Go watch Terminator again, Skynet, um, because, you know, sometimes these movies are, are perhaps there for a reason other than our entertainment. Yes, it's it's going to be certainly an interesting end to to 2020. Uh, we don't know in the, the the next month how the the final uh, if the final count is going to be legitimate and certified, and the electoral uh, college will will 
vote for who legitimately got uh, the the most votes in each each state. We saw Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, today said there will be smooth transition to a second Trump uh, administration. We've seen uh, that uh, uh, federal agents have tried to intimidate a U.S. Postal Service uh, whistleblower into recanting what he told uh, Project Veritas. We don't know what. Uh, uh, China is going to do with regards to Taiwan uh, in this uh, uncertain period with the, the US uh, election. Uh, so there's certainly a lot to uh, unfold. Uh, I'll be there to cover it. So will you with your uh, McIntyre report, which you've got a new episode uh, coming out uh, tonight. And so will uh, Australian uh, National Review and The Unshackled. Yes, it's a true, Tim. And then so also with independent media, seeing that's happened, there is more and more independent media coming out, which is because people no longer trust mainstream media. Certainly, we don't trust our governments. I'm surprised anyone still trusts Dan Andrews, but I think their support is overstated. Uh, I mean, I believe in the Australian people. I believe in people around the world. I believe in the future humanity. So that if we overcome this and can rid the criminals from our political systems and banking systems, then the world can be an amazing place. And uh, so there's a lot of positive can come. So it's, the fight is worth it. Um, but we are in a fight and we need to get um, our fellow friends to realize that we can't just go along thinking everything's going to be okay and not care about our community or our country or, or the things outside of our little circle because someone has to care about that and take charge of that. If we all just focus on our own little patch, unfortunately, who's looking out to stop if anyone's trying to take over the world, you know? They distract us with sport, they distract us with this, and everyone's too busy with that, not realising, hang on a minute, what's really going on in the world? Um, so this year, 2020, has made a lot of people interested in politics, not for political reasons, but for reasons because it affects our future. And for those who don't understand why so many people support Donald Trump that don't even particularly like Donald Trump, I mean, I dealt in business with Donald Trump many years ago, particular at the time, didn't particularly like the way that he did business. But uh, I'm not going to support um, criminals that's a, a part of the democratic organisation. So that's why as many people, uh, and without being political, if you know what I'm saying, we're supporting not for political reasons, we're supporting uh, one side because they're the side that will fight for our freedoms where the other side is in bed with communist China, communist regime, and uh, that's not the future that I want to live in. So people like communist China, by all means, leave, go live there. Um, or you could say if you want to be a communist, you just move to Victoria, but that would be a bit mean, wouldn't it, Tim? Um, I think that's already happened uh, over <laughs> yeah. the past uh, decade. Uh, I've certainly, well, we're talking about the escape from Victoria. Um, I've got to weigh up my op my options. Do I stay and 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 try and uh, uh, fight for the the state to be liberated from the communist in insurgency, or do I I, I flee? I'll certainly be uh, very soon uh, uh, traveling. Uh, hopefully, I. I uh, get to come and see you uh, in not too distant future up on the Gold Coast and meet uh, the other uh, freedom fighters up there. But certainly this isn't going to be, there, there's no magic slippers, which if you click them, uh, everything's going to go back to normal next year. Yeah, the, the new COVID normal has been programmed as for. Now, I definitely, my recommendation is still for Victorians to get out of Victoria. I'd be leaving now if you can. Of course, if they do open the borders, New South Wales, November 23rd, get the hell out of there. Uh, if you think the it's all great now and there's not going to be more lockdowns, you're in for a rude shock. This battle is not over. This has not even started what they plan to do there. Now, yes, they can try and do it in other states in Australia, but we have more chance to fight and defend uh, in, in other states. And uh, and also Queensland, whether you like it or not, it's actually not a bad place to live, you know. Uh, Southeast Queensland, Gold Coast, Brisbane is going to become probably where most, uh, probably half a million Victorians move to. Um, but, yeah, no, I love love Melbourne, et cetera, but Melbourne's not what it used to be the most livable city in the world. But, Tim, as you know, 2020, somehow I don't think Melbourne's going to win the most livable city award. I mean, the communists, they ruined uh, LA in California. So uh, they've, mo they've moved on to Melbourne now. Yes, that's right. Well, it's been great chatting to you tonight, Tim. And uh, uh, when you escape uh, Victoria, we'll, uh, we'll certainly welcome you across the Queensland border. Uh, of course, if it's legal to get into Queensland, yeah. you'll get to get into New South Wales first. 
Yeah, definitely. And I'll give you a, a hug because that's the other thing. They've tried to limit human contact, physical contact this year. Yeah, it's like coming, jumping across the Berlin Wall. You, you'll deserve a hug after that. All right, take care, uh, uh, Jamie. Uh, so your, your website, you have two uh, ways to get to uh, Australian National Review web address. Yeah, the shortest way is anrnews.com. That's anrnews.com. It's australiannationalreview.com. You know, that's the name of the site. So either way you can get there. Please share our articles, send us in Intel, and on there you can get access to lists of all our other social media uh, platforms if you wish to join the growing community, uh, particularly on Telegram of um, of our followers. Citizen journalism is what we support. So um, you know, send in your articles or send in your information. That's the way we're able to compete with multi-billion dollar funded um, media networks that wish to lie to you on a day-to-day -day basis and that we have you know thousands and thousands of uh, citizen journalists around the world uh, that's supporting what we're doing to simply speak the truth so that's all we're about uh, if we're not sure on something we'll pose the question so please people can find out about what is the allegations about something and often from that the evidence comes pouring in that we can then verify and confirm things so that way we can often lead stories which we have this year we were one of the earliest to call bullshit on COVID um and uh, then you've seen the likes of alan jones etc on sky news uh follow that and start calling out some of the same things that we called out months earlier in a and r and there's also your entrepreneurial website 21st uh, uh 21 stcenturyu.com that's where uh many of your your free uh entre entrepreneurial ebooks uh, can be found yeah, that's a not-for-profit educational resource. I mean, people paid tens of thousands of dollars for those courses on there. You can now get the uh, majority of that for free. And also, if you opt in at anrnews.com, um, you get um, The Great Vaccine Con, the book that many brave doctors and scientists taught me wrote for free. Uh, and my what I didn't learn at school but wish I had my first bestseller, which I wrote over 20 years ago for free. So opt in there. That way, when we do continue to get banned off Facebook, uh, all the all the pages of Facebook, you can still be updated with the uh, with the A and R news. All right, take care, uh, Jamie. Uh, we'll speak again soon, and thanks for coming on tonight. You're welcome, Tim. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes, and keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.